Hello, this is um, tutorial number seven on advanced multi-threading in Java and um, from Cave on Programming and in this tutorial we're going to look at blocking queues in Java and we're going to look at the producer consumer pattern. So I'm just going to launch into this directly and um, we're going to be using a class um, that implements the blocking queue interface and the specific class I'm going to use is array blocking queue. Um, so I'll do Control Shift O to add the inputs here, and uh, I'm going to give this a maximum size of 10. Now this array blocking queue is a data structure which can hold data items, um, the type um, of which you can choose, as with array list, and um, it's uh, this queue works um, in the way that you can add items to it and you can remove items from it and the first um, the items that you remove will be the first ones that you added so it's first in first out and um, you could add any kind of items to this but I'm just going to make this take um, an integer I'm going to make it um, store integers for the sake of this um, tutorial now the, the really good thing about these um, classes in the concurrent package are that they are thread safe so I can access this from multiple threads and I don't have to worry about thread synchronization and I'm going to have here um, a method let's say I'll make it private private void I'm going to call it producer and what producer does is um, it loops indefinitely and um, I'm going to make it use the um, random random number uh, generator in Java because the idea of a um, producer consumer is that you have one thread that's producing things and well one or more threads that are producing things and those threads add things to a common data share which is our queue and then other threads remove things from this queue and process it so in this case um, I'm gonna just add random integers to this queue just to simulate doing something uh, in the kind of real world. So I'll say um, queue. I'm going to use a method called put and I'll say random dot next int and I'll say that I want random integers up to 100 so next int brackets 100 will give me a random integer from the range up from 0 to 99 not including 100 here and um, this throws an interrupted exception so I'll just throw this straight out the method if I can um, add throws declaration um, so here's my producer and this could be for example a thread that um, checks um, somehow checks for text messages that people are sending if we had a text message server and puts them into this queue and now we want some other thread that takes messages off that queue and sends them to their destination just for example so let's have a private void consumer here um, and uh, what I'm going to do is this consumer is also going to loop indefinitely um, just for the sake of simplicity because of course you wouldn't normally have an indefinite loop but here I will and I want this to only take off um, I want to only take integers off every once in a while so let's for a start make it sleep thread.sleep um, for 100 milliseconds um, every time in this loop so we'll have like 10 loops a second and um, I'll throw the uh, interrupted exception again and I'm also going to use random here actually and I'm gonna what I'm gonna do with random here is that I'm gonna randomly take things off this queue uh, because in the real world this would be something that takes things off the queue and takes time to process each item so it will be taking items um, only as fast as it's able to and I'm going to simulate that happening here by um, randomly choosing whether to take an item or not um, each time the loop goes round so let's say for example um, if random dot next int and I'll make it count up to 10 and I'll say that if that equals 0 
then I'll do um, integer um, value equals q whoops equals q dot take um, and um, I will output the value that I've got here and I'll say taken um, value and I'll say value and I'll also say um, q size is and I'll output and blocking q has um, a kind of size member just like ArrayList does so q u q u e u e dot size okay um, so now the really great things about put and take well there are two really great things about them because for one thing there's no synchronized keyword anywhere here and there's no need because that's all taken care of for you here with these Java Util concurrent packages of which this is one and the other great thing is um, you can say okay what if there's nothing in the queue and in that case take or patiently wait here um, until something is added to the queue and then it will take it and return it um, which saves you a lot of effort and it doesn't consume too many resources while it's waiting or anything like that and then um, uh, put will um, supposing the queue is full and in this case it would be full after only 10 items put will patiently wait until items are removed from the queue the size is less than 10 and there's space in the queue and then it will execute so both of these methods are incredibly friendly and um, they work within your system resources which is really fantastic so to see this in operation let's um, have a couple of threads I'm going to say thread t1 equals new thread and I'll say in here um, new runnable and I'll have my public void run method here and I'll say producer and um, I'm going to have thread uh, actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to handle the interrupted exception here as well um, if it will let me so um, oh yeah I, I also need to say of course these have to be static because I'm just working with static methods here and I'm also going to make my blocking queue static private static everything static basically for the sake of simplicity and then I can handle this try catch and I'm going to have another thread here running my consumer at the same time so t2 and this is going to be consumer so um, and then of course I need to actually start the thread so t1.start t2.start and I need to wait until they finish which will be never so I'll kill my application with the, the red kind of kill button down there in due course and uh, I'm going to throw the interrupted exception out of main just so that I can not have to handle it um, for the moment okay so um, if I run that um, what happens is um, so the producer is gonna um, add things as fast as it can to the queue of course so my producer is just adding things as fast as it can but you notice um, that um, because the consumer is only taking things off it's actually um, well this loop happens 10 times a second but it's only one in every 10 times on average that it takes an item so it's only on average once per second um, but that, the interval is, is irregular because I'm, I'm doing this random thing here um, which um, is only true one in every 10 times so um, when the queue is full um, which it is much of the time you see here queue size is 10 but sometimes it's nine if I've just taken an item off then put patiently waits until the consumer has taken an item off the queue and then it executes and um, of course like if the queue is empty then take would wait until there was an item on the queue and so you have this very nice behavior here where everything is just beautifully synchronized and you're not even having to worry about thread synchronization at all um, so if you've been following the series of tutorials this is kind of maybe the missing piece that you'll need to really successfully implement um, your kind of multi-threading uh, multi-threaded applications um, because it's, it's always best to avoid 
low level synchronization with the synchronized keyword yourself if you can and um, it's always best to try to use these things if you can in the Java Util concurrent package but having said that in the next tutorial just in case you need it we're going to look at how you would do this using low level threading techniques with um, notify and wait and the synchronized keyword so um, join me again next time and uh, have fun with this you can find this code on caveofprogramming.com all one word and until next time happy coding